I want to take a minute, some of you guys, uh, ladies who do metal work, I want to show you my version of a low cost tumbler. This, I have been using this thing for several years. I, I don't remember where exactly I bought this electric. It's a Yard Max. Maybe I got it at Northern Tool or I'm not exactly sure where I got this, but it's just got a belt drive, a little small motor on it inside under this cover, you know, on and off switch. It's kind of dusty and dirty because that's the way my shop is. I've never used it for concrete. I bought this just to be a tumbler and I struggle with what kind of media to use in the tumbler. But one day I just kind of had this idea. I just went down to my local building supply and I bought a 25 pound box of drywall screws. And I've been running these drywall screws. Now I don't run this every day. I'm not running it five or six hours a day. Um, but it does a really decent job. I mean, I'm sure it's not as good as a regular tumbler, but uh, these drywall screws have held up really well. Matter of fact, I thought about adding another 25 pounds to it, but the 25 pounds has really done all I need to do because I'm usually just putting small batch stuff in here. Um, and, you know, when you, I'll, I'll show you how. So you can adjust the, you know, you can adjust your mixer with this handle. And sometimes you get it a little bit too low. Uh, you know, some of those may come out. And, they, and some of them still come out occasionally. They'll just drop on the floor and I'll pick them up. But I did, I did two, mod, I did one modification to this uh, unit. I took out the, this normally had um, bolt-in, I think they were bolt-in uh, paddles that were angled and curved for mixing the, the cement. And those had to come out. They didn't. They did not do a good job of keeping the media, you know, spinning around at a, at a good rate. So I took and put pieces of angle iron. I just got two pieces of angle iron. I bolted them in through it. They've they've been on there ever since I did this. I probably made this thing at least five years ago, and it's worked out great. And those paddles seem to really help just stir the media up. And so you know, I'll turn it on. So, now this thing is loud, uh, man. If you're if you're close to neighbors you may not want to be using this thing. You know, I never, I considered maybe one time putting a cover over the front hole, but I just never have done that. Just hadn't needed it. Uh, I'm kind of out in the country and it's, you know, I don't run it that many hours at a time. So I'm gonna turn it on. So you can get a real, I'll just stand back a few feet. And then when you get, when you start putting components in there, then they'll start, you know, jumping around. Let me show you. Let me put a couple of pieces in there. I had just ran some... So when you start putting... Um, I don't think I have my settings just right. Let me go down one more. There we go. You gotta get it where it's coming. And as you can see, the parts just really get banged around in there. And the more pieces you have in there, the better. So he really cleans it up, but you can see how loud it gets. But you have to get it tilted over pretty good to do that. I want to stop this. And the reason I want to show you that is because it does get loud. But if you get it, if you don't have it pitched over enough, like I had, I had it one notch off. Uh, they, it just didn't tumble correctly. You could lean it over further, and it would tumble even more. But that you'd get more of a chance of the screws coming out. Uh, these are some of the parts I tumbled here uh, just this past week. I'm rehabbing an old 451 uh, New Holland hay mower. And I know this still looks rusty because it is. These are cast components, but they had thick rust on them. And this thing did a great job of just getting all that, that surface uh, heavy rust off. Uh, they could be linseed oiled up now and look good. They still have, like I said, a real, they have a real... Uh, rust patina to them that, that hasn't come off probably if I ran them long enough it might but I wasn't interested in getting them just shiny new I was just interested in getting them cleaned up enough to where I could put them back on and reuse them and it really did a good job I didn't run them I, I think I had there's 10 I think there's about 10 of these on that mower and I think I ran them for not quite an hour like you say there's still places that the paint's still on there but if, you'd, if I'd have just kept running them, all that would have it, uh, come off, depending on how clean you want to get it. I didn't really care on these. I'll show you some other parts I did. I also 
I threw all the nuts in there too, same thing. These nuts were just really, had thick rust on them, but the tumbler, you know, cleaned them out really nice. Now, I do a lot of, uh, and, and well, here's some, here's the guide plates for that same piece, same thing. Clean the heavy rust off. And that's all I really want to do, and it's just a lot easier than trying to hand clean them up. I don't have a sandblaster or anything like that. So, but here's some parts, I'll show you these. A lot of times we cut out, I have a, I have a, a plasma cut table, whoops, and we'll cut these, and you'll see there is still a little bit of cleanup on that really tough, where it, it didn't quite get all of that stuff on the backside where the cut went through. But this is on, on new metal, you can kind of see the level of getting the scale off to me is very acceptable. I mean, if, if I wanted to get these powder coated, um, they would be ready to go, just to go right in the powder coater. Cause they got, you can see how the drywall screws, you know, really do a good job of kind of, uh, not severely, but it does put a little uh, etching on that, on that steel. So I do a lot of small parts. I'll forge uh, leaves and things for projects. And what I'll do is if I'm doing a, a forging project where I do a lot, I do a lot of florals, I'll just uh, dump them in the, dump them in my uh, tumbler and just turn them on. I just usually wear, wear my ear protection when this thing's running. But for most stuff, if it's not heavily scaled or if it's not real bad, you know, you run them 20, 30 minutes, it does a pretty good job. And I have run some parts as, as much as an hour. Now, these little pieces that I just showed you, I've actually, they were they were really, they had a lot of buildup. The cut quality on the backside was pretty rough and I didn't really want to hand clean every one of them up. So I've had these in here just as a part of the mix. Probably, they've probably had two to four hours of run time on them, but they were really rough when they started and they're, they're, they just need a lot more cleanup. So I just left them in here. I didn't need them immediately for anything. So I just left them in here. But anyway, just thought I'd do a quick video on this and maybe it'll help you. I'm sure other guys have done the same thing. My biggest thing was finding an inexpensive media. I know some of the media is, uh, is like a jack, shaped like a little jacks. And I'm sure they do a great job. They're just more expensive because you can go pick up a box of draw 25 pound box of drywall screws are not that terrible expensive. I mean, 40 or 50 bucks, I think. I'm not sure what they are nowadays. It's been a while since I bought them. But they've, they've held up good, they work good. And you can just see the extent of them being tumbled, how all the black oxide, you know, they were black oxide, you know, is gone on these. And and honestly, they, they're still, they're, they're, they're a little dull. They get a little dull as they go along. Um, you, you know, you might have to change them out at some point because they definitely lose their lose their sharpness but they do a good job as a as a tumbler medium anyway just thought i'd share that with you hope this helps somebody out there who maybe needs to tumble some stuff i don't know what else you could tumble in it maybe i'll tumble some other products in it uh, i just do steel in mine i don't know what other stuff you could do it you might could throw some small wood pieces in there and distress it i, I, I just really don't know for a long time i tried to use scrap steel in here as my media but it just it I didn't have a, it didn't have a, the consistency of these drywall screws. You need a real consistent media to, to get you a uh, nice, even patina. You can see the inside of that drum. Uh, you can see it doesn't get up here much. This has still got some paint on it, but down there at the very bottom, you can see how it, uh, it's really cleaned all that paint off and slicked it up. And there's a fair amount of dust in here. You can see, I'm trying to, you can see the dust that gets filled up in there. Uh, so every now and then you could clean it out and get that dust out, but I don't ever fool with this because it does make a metal dust. But anyway, hope this helps somebody. Uh, you guys have a blessed day. Take care. God bless.